Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome on in to the Clay Share Studio. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. We have a really great live broadcast planned for you. And oh my goodness, my chickens are outside just having a good old time. Might have to have somebody go check on them to make sure they're okay. But yeah, put me up, give me comments and uh, we'll go do that. So I'm going to be doing a live broadcast on using lusters. And we're going to also be giving away a set of lusters. So it's going to be a pretty exciting night. Uh, yeah, see who's tuning in and where everybody's from. Tuning in from Florida, here from Michigan. I'm glad you could make it. Who else is here? Who are the folks over on, on Instagram who's here today? Mary. All right. That's all right. Get going. We got to check on those chickens and it'll figure it out. All right. So Kevin's going to go do a quick check on chickens and I'm just going to go ahead and chat with you all while he does that because something's up and I'll just go over what we what we have here so lusters are a thing you can put on top of your glazed pottery you have to have already glazed pieces in order to do a luster firing you do not want to put the luster on unglazed pieces you'll end up with a very matte ugly looking surface they really need to go on a glazed finished surface and are fired as a third firing and I do have a formal class on ClayShare.com or on the ClayShare app if you prefer. And in that class, I go over all the things about lusters. And I'm going to talk quite a bit about it tonight and answer your luster questions. So let me just give a brief overview. Hold your questions until I do that, and then I'll answer everybody's questions. And we'll do a little tutorial on how to use them, and then we're going to give some away. All right. So luster firing is a third firing. It works best on a fired glazed piece. So like this, something that's already done, something that's already been through the firing process or a vase like this, really anything you want to put it on. It is a coating that goes on top of the surface and you fire it again to a lower temperature, usually 018, and it just softens the surface enough so that that luster can bond to it. And it's a micro thin layer of material that you're applying. So when we put things like lusters on, and here's a piece that I've already lustered, it is such a fine line that if you take a Brillo pad or anything really abrasive and scrub it, you could actually scrub your luster off. That's why when you use lusters, it is not recommended to put them in the dishwasher because the process of washing in a dishwasher bumps it around and it can nick some of the luster off. Also, the soap used in dishwashers can be really harsh and can cause the gold luster or really any luster to fade over time. So it's really a decorative surface technique and it's something you're going to put on things that are a little extra special. You don't want to put it on your everyday dinner, everyday dinnerware. If you do, it's going to it's going to wear off really fast. So they're made for pieces that you can put on and really admire and to highlight it. Now, that being said, I have mugs that I have mother of pearl luster on that I've been using for almost a decade and the mother of pearl luster is completely fine. But I hand wash those mugs. I never put them in the dishwasher and it's not a problem. Now, I know some of you want to know if luster is food safe. And the lusters that I'm going to be using tonight are Duncan. You will slowly notice that the labels on the Duncan lusters are going to be switching over to Mako. So my mother of pearl luster, I noticed today when I got it, that it says Mako, mother of pearl luster. But my gold still says Duncan and my white gold, which is silver or sometimes called platinum, also still says Duncan. And I'm guessing over time, since Mako bought the luster line of Duncan products, that all the bottles and packaging are going to switch over to say Mako. So Mako luster is what we'll be calling it. So the Mako mother of pearl and the Mako Duncan, Mako white gold, they're all food safe. The bright gold, the white gold, the um, premium gold, that's the very fancy gold, they are all food safe. So you can use them on pieces and if any of it comes off, it's not going to hurt you. It just mars the beauty of your piece. So that's something to think about and I get asked a ton if it's food safe because people are concerned that it's not. Yes, for the Mako slash Duncan line, other companies might not be food safe. So you need to check with the manufacturer if you're using another brand. So I hope that's that's really helpful for you all and um, you know and answers any questions and 
appeases any anxiety or hesitation you had for using the lusters because they're really great. Let me show you some pieces that I've lustered. So this is mother of pearl luster on a pitcher. And I think if we go to camera two, we can really show how luster changes a surface. And I wanna show you a piece that's not lustered. So this is a piece that's not lustered. And you see it has a really nice glossy shine. Here's a piece that's lustered with mother of pearl. And do you see how it's extra pearly? It picks up uh, all these iridescent colors. The camera doesn't really show it as well as real life does, but I don't know if maybe you can see in here, you can really see how pearly this looks here. And that's what the luster does. So mother of pearl luster is my favorite one to use because it looks great over everything and it just pearlizes the surface. So if you ever wanted to create a pearly surface, this is what you do. You put that on there and you can see how it sort of elevates the piece. It does on porcelain, it does make the porcelain a little creamier because it's pearl, right? And when you think about pearls, they usually have a creaminess to them. So it's, it changes it a tiny bit, but not in a way that's bad. It's just a little different. So that's the, the mother of pearl luster staying on the camera too. Let me show you the close-up of the gold. right there. We'll try to get that camera in there so folks can see. Um, so the gold luster, which is what I have on this little piece, and this glaze is Amico's Snapdragon uh, Celadon. So the Snapdragon Celadon is one of their more opaque Celadon glazes, and it's a red, so you can put the gold luster on anything. And I saw some folks on Insta couldn't see the mother of pearl. How's that? I'll give them that so they can see it. So the gold is on the rim of this little planter. It's on the sides and everything, and it just, it just kind of changes the look. I think it really, um, it really changes it. It means food safe because it's inert. It means food safe because the materials in it are not harmful. Yeah, so you've, you're fine. It doesn't mean drink the luster. That would be bad. That, that's not safe to do. But once it's fired on a piece, it's perfectly fine. It's food safe. There's nothing in it that's going to cause any harm to you when you're using a product that states that it's food safe. So you must check. You must check. Um, I can tell you if we look at the, we look at the Mako, you know, it's a food safe product. So just make sure what you're using is food safe. All right. So you got your lusters and really most people here in the U.S., I can only speak about but um, the abalone plate, bologna plate is actually downstairs, Lisa. I should, <laughs> I should go grab it. Um, it's the pink pearlized honeycomb hex plate, Kev. If you want to go downstairs, it's a, the abalone bologna, which is an inside joke. Some of you know what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing, but we'll have him go get it. All right. So when we talk about lusters, the most common ones used in the U.S. are the mother of pearl. That's the one in here. So this is our pearlized finish, right? Right there. That's our pearl. The bright gold or premium gold. The difference between bright gold and premium gold is bright gold is going to be, here I'll show you this, bright gold is going to be more, uh, more red and premium gold will be more yellow. So that'll be the difference between the two. And then white gold or also platinum. So it's just like a silver finish. So that's what you're gonna get. And normally they come in these little teeny tiny vials for the golds. This is my, let me see if I can find it. This is my bright gold that I normally use is this little teeny tiny guy right here. But, but bam, we're giving away the big ones. You're getting the big golds in the giveaway tonight. So it's not the little teensy weensy. So you're gonna get this good sized jar of mother of pearl luster. You're gonna get this great jar of bright gold and this nice vial of the white gold. So it's a really great prize we're giving away tonight. And included is three jars of the essence. And you might wonder why you need three different jars of essence. Well, you need one for every luster you have because if you have any cross contamination, it can ruin how your luster works. So you don't want to put your white gold in your bright gold or your mother of pearl in your gold. So what we're going to do is each one of these essences, 
will have the name of what it goes to written on it. So this one right here, if I'm going to use it for white gold, I'll write W gold on the bottle. So that's written on the bottle. So now I know that's the white gold essence. Mother of Pearl designation is MOP. That's what we use for Mother of Pearl. That's pretty standard in the industry. If you see MOP written after something, like as a description of what's in it, it usually means Mother of Pearl has been applied to the surface. And then the last one here is going to be for the bright gold. So I'll write B gold on it. So the same with brushes. So you need to designate brushes for each single one of your lusters. So when you're buying a luster, you're going to buy a luster, an essence, a brush. Buy all three at the same time when you're purchasing them from your ceramic supplier and then you have it to use. So the bigger brush will be our mother of pearl brush, right? Because let me just write on this. On the back, I'm going to write MOP. You could put tape on here, like uh, blue painter's tape or any other tape on there and use that. But I usually just write MOP on the handle. So that's my mother of pearl brush. And then the white gold will go with the number two round. These just happen to be the brushes we're doing as part of the giveaway. We have a one half inch flat, a zero round, and a two round. So I'll just make this WG for white gold and BG for bright gold. And if I had premium gold, it would be PG, right? So questions so far. So the big bottle of gold has the same two grams of color. Mako had a temporary go to larger bottles. Is that what the deal is? Oh, I'm so disappointed. Let me hold it up to the light and see. You're right. You're right. I was all jazzed. I got this giant bottle. I got this giant bottle of gold. I was like, yeah, I won the lottery. All right. So you just get a bigger bottle for impressing your friends. <laughs> So any questions so far on the whole contamination issue, why you have to have a different essence bottle and brush bottle for each luster? It makes sense, right? And if you want different sized brushes, then you get bigger brushes for that luster, right? It just makes complete sense. And if you're going to do a lot of lustering, you'll have a, lust a luster setup. You'll have your designated brushes. You're not going to use these brushes for anything else other than luster. They're not meant to be used for china painting or brushing on glaze. Now, essence is what we use to clean our brushes, and it's also the material we use if we have to thin down any of the lusters. Sometimes over time they become thick and tarry, and you have to add the essence to it. So that's why you need the essence. Um, in my class, I teach you all, I use lavender oil because that's what I like to use as my agent for cleaning my gold and cleaning my brushes. You could also use clove oil if you wish. Those two products, uh, those, they're essential oils. When I'm saying lavender oil or clove oil, I mean essential oil. You can use those or if you're just getting it, get yourself the essence. It makes it easier. When I started doing lusters, the essence wasn't that easy for me to get a hold of. It was easier for me to get lavender oil and clove oil. So that's why I started searching for other options. Ah, few people asking about the giveaways. All right, so if you're new to Clay Share, welcome on in. We do giveaways monthly. We have a sponsor and we have a goodie or two or three that we give away. And the way you enter is you just go to ClayShare.com and sign up for our email list. That's it. Now, premium members of ClayShare are automatically entered, so please don't think you have to worry. You guys are automatically taken care of always, so no worries there. All right, see if there's any essence questions. You're ready to do some luster firing. It'll be your second time doing this technique. Awesome. You're going to fall in love with it. Ah, can you fire Mother of Pearl and Gold together at 018? So that's a yes and no question. Yes, they both can be fired together at 018. They cannot touch. If they touch, they will muddle each other up and cause a problem. So what has to happen? You have to put whichever one you want to put on first. First, I recommend Mother of Pearl. Fire it and then bring it out of the kiln and put your gold on and fire it again. So that would make two more firings. And I have got um, some pieces. I'm not sure why it's other downstairs. But 
I do gold, I do mother of pearl on a lot of pieces, and I do china painting on those pieces, and they each need a separate firing. So you're gonna layer them on and fire them in between applications. But you can completely put it on. So is luster compatible with any glaze and with low fire, 06 glaze? Absolutely. So luster is completely compatible with low firing, it's completely compatible with high fire and mid-range because you're doing a separate third firing at 018. So you're doing a completely different firing. Now I do 018, some people like to go 022, some do 016. You find the one that works for you. 018 is nice for me because all my lusters work at that temperature, my overglaze decals work at that temperature, and my china paints work at that temperature. So I can put them all on and have a kiln full of pieces that have all those different treatments on it and fire them at the same time. So do I make a small load when firing them? Well, you wanna have enough breathing room. You don't wanna do a tightly packed kiln. Same rules apply as a glaze fire. You don't want them touching. Could you do just a couple pieces? Absolutely, you can. Um, often I will have a shelf set up in my studio and I will do my lustering. And once I have that shelf full, I put them in the kiln. Also, I'll save my pieces to be lustered until I have a shelf full to then I'll just have a big lustering session and I'll do it all. Let me show the abalone bologna plate. We'll go to camera two. So this plate right here was a plate that I glazed with Mako's abalone glaze. And I can actually show the back. Hold on, let me take that off. There's the back. That's the glaze. That's how it looks. You have to excuse the, this is a plate I keep as a example. So it sits around the studio and gets a little dirty. This glaze is kind of bleh. Right? It doesn't have anything going for it. It's sort of meh. Ready? Well, now look at it. I guarantee not everybody will like this no matter what, but it so changed the surface. And this was just mother of pearl applied on top of the Mako abalone glaze. Look at that. Look at that surface. And you still see the texture that was there before right? But now you have all the iridescence and the swirls coming out and everything, and it just really changes the surface quality of a piece. So you go from that, eh, it's a pinky color, it's kind of blah, to bam, hi, look at me now, right? That's pretty awesome. So could you put gold on a wood-fired piece? Absolutely, and then fire it again to 018. You can put gold on anything. Now let me tell you about one more thing to keep in mind. The luster is gonna take on the surface properties of whatever glaze you're using. That means if you put it on a gloss plate, gloss glazed piece, then necessarily have to be a plate, you're gonna have a shiny luster. If like the gold is shiny, we have these really pretty shiny pieces. If you put it on a satin finish, you're gonna have a satin luster. You put it on a matte, you're gonna have a dry matte luster. It's not gonna be very pretty. Your best option is going to be a gloss surface. Lusters love gloss, that's my suggestion. I highly recommend you put it only on gloss glazes, but some satin glazes you can do it too. Just do some tests. Matte glazes, uh, it just goes blah. So it's just not really worth it on a matte glazed piece. It's not what you want. Really what we're going for is a beautiful glossy surface. A great example of a makeover with that plate, right? Um, how many layers of luster did I put on? This was one layer, just one, one coat. And I'm gonna show you how I did it on this little plate that I've got right here. And I'll luster this up in a minute. And this was a plate we made two weeks ago. So if you watched me paint those flowers, go to camera, go to camera too. Um, the flower plate that we did. Here it is done, gloss glaze, clear gloss glaze on the surface. So you can see the shine. And this is what we will put, there's the back, so you can see the back side. We're just gonna put luster on the entire thing for this. Uh, here's a vase I did that I think will luster as well. And I might have, I have one more vase downstairs that I want to luster. So it's one of my rainbow swirl vases. So we're going to luster some things. Um, and I've got a little tiny plate, which we're going to put white gold on. I always use the bright gold, 
So I thought we'd do the white gold, although I got this one I might do as well. So last week we did face plates in prime time. Here they are done. So that's this face, this, this cutie here. I don't know, gold in the rim of this. Don't you think that'd be amazing? So maybe we'll do that. I wanna do everything. We'll see, we'll see how much time we have. I gotta stop talking and start working if we're gonna get there. <laughs> so maybe use an eyedropper and only one bottle of essence, but um, you need to swish your brush out to clean it. So you need to swish your brush in the bottle and you can't swish the brush in the bottle. No, you need to just, the essence isn't that expensive. Just either buy a larger jar of like lavender essential oil and smaller jars to decant it off into and then use smaller bottles that way or just designate luster essences. In the giveaway, we're giving away three. So you guys, whoever wins this is taken care of. All right, let's talk about safety issues when we use luster. Uh, luster does have some volatile organic compounds when you breathe it in, just like airplane glue does or model paint. So if you ever have done building models and use that paint, it's a, a really not great thing to breathe in. So you wanna work in a well-ventilated space. I am in a rather drafty 1830s carriage house. So check that box for ventilation. I also have my EnviroCleanse air cleaner going, which is really nice, but those things alone are not enough. You wanna wear a respirator and you wanna get one designated for VOCs, volatile organic compounds. And here I have a 3M6100 half mask right here that I'll be wearing tonight. It'll be very attractive. And uh, I have the cartridges on it that are rated for VOCs. So your silica mask that you use for silica particles alone is not enough to cut it. You can get masks that are rated for silica and VOCs. That would work for both. But my ma I have two masks in my life. That's the kind of girl I am. I'm a two mask girl. I have my VOC mask and I have my silica mask. And it just happened that way. It's not intentional. <laughs> Can you luster outside? Absolutely. Yeah. Going to remelt at 018, why would it matter if it touches? Oh, let me explain that a little clearer. Yes, you can put the gold on top, but it's different. The mother of pearl has already cured and it's already stiffened up to the surface. It's not gonna be as wet or melty as the gold would be. So if you brush mother of pearl on and then brush gold on and don't fire in between, you're gonna get a gray brown blobby mess. And if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and do it because I've done it and I found out that's what you get. So if you wanna do it, by all means, go ahead and put it on your piece and then you can come back and tell me I was right. And I am right, because I've been doing this for a long time. So I actually know what I'm talking about with that. So you put your luster on, fire it, put your other, other luster on and fire it again. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna put our mask on, but before we do that, you wanna prep your surfaces. We've been touching all these things. We have oils and dust in the air. So you wanna clean the surface. I use um, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. 70% is fine. If you have 90, 91%, you can use that too. It doesn't matter. And then good old paper towels. And we just wipe the surface down to get rid of any dust or anything on there. Does any essential oil work? I have only tried lavender and clove because I've looked back through lots of books from history about using lusters and what artists in the past have found useful and clove and lavender are the only ones I saw mentioned. I haven't heard of anybody using others. That doesn't mean they won't work. I've not tried them myself because I didn't need to, but by all means, do a little bit and see if it works. All right, so I got some rubbing alcohol on my paper towel and I'm just gonna scrub the surface of this because this is the one we're gonna luster and I'm only gonna luster the front, so I don't need to worry about cleaning the back. There's, you know, I mean, you can if it makes you feel better, but you don't have to. So a luster firing is gonna be a lower temperature. It's gonna be less work on your kiln, right? So you're gonna use less energy. So it's gonna cost a lot less than firing a bisque fire or a glaze fire. Not a ton less, but you know. You have the same mask, Jane, Woohoo! Gold lines on the rim in the pattern. I think, Jennifer, you're right, I think so. 
And I do want to put a reminder out tonight. I will not be doing prime time tonight. We're going to do it on Friday. Believe it or not, I'm actually not feeling well. I've just had a lot of caffeine to get through this broadcast because I really wanted to do the giveaway tonight. So um, I'm going to do this and then rest up. But Friday at 6.15, we'll be doing prime time and we're doing China paints, which is a great follow up for the luster. And I think you guys will love it. So I'm going to clean this off because I think we're going to do gold definitely on the rim of this. Um, so it used to be if you're going to put gold on something, you would glaze it red where you're going to put the gold and then put the gold on. For whatever reason, red underneath the gold makes the gold pop better. I don't know what that is, but I did it here and you have to admit it's popping. How to luster a pit fired pot, luster edge and then do sawdust fire. Um, I don't know if that would work. Is your pit fired pot gloss surface? Because if not, you're just going to get a dull brown finish. You won't get gold and you won't get pretty mother of pearl. You really need a glossy fired surface. It doesn't work on every single thing. All right, so we got some things clean and I'm, I'm going to clean this one. I don't know if I'll get to it. We'll see how fast. Mother of Pearl goes really fast. You'll see when we do it. You'll be shocked at how fast it goes. Squeaky, squeaky clean plates here. Yay, China paints. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll be all right. I'm not feeling well. I got a, a little under the weather, but you know, soldiering on. All right, I think we're going to come on into the overhead and do it because we're going to be focusing on this plate right here. All right, so I'm going to do the mother of pearl luster. I'm going to don my mask. Let me put that on. And mother of pearl luster is pretty easy. You just kind of brush it on all over the place. Take off my glasses and put my mask on first. So speaking is going to be a little more difficult for me while I'm wearing this. So if you have questions, might not answer them all until I get the lustering of the mother of pearl done. So I have to hold your question. Or just wait. Okay. Can you all hear me? Do we have sound? Can you hear me? Okay. I, I sound a bit uh, like Darth Vader, but that's all good. We're going to start with the mother of pearl luster and I'm going to take the half inch brush right there and I'm going to go ahead and open up the essence that I designated for mother of pearl right here and I'm just going to start by dipping my brush in it then take a clean paper towel and just pat it dry open up my mother of pearl they have a safety seal on it, and you'll notice it's blue. Some lusters, are, some mother of pearl lusters are different colors. This one happens to be a blue one. You dip your brush in, and then you just kind of swirl it on. And you don't need a heavy application of it. And this is why I said it goes really fast. And the swirly... Well, look here. See how it's kind of swirly? That's what's making it swirly, the way we apply it. Mother of Pearl is the most affordable of the lusters, too. Just twirl that on. So a really good idea is to have a little lump of clay. <laughs> then you can stab your brush into it and also your little tiny bottles so that you don't knock them over. So that's the mother of pearl on a plate. And that's it. That's the application of it. Now, some people like to wear gloves, so you could wear nitrile, or if you're not allergic to latex, latex gloves. And then I let this set, usually a few hours, and then I put it in the kiln 
I do a medium speed firing to cone 018, and then that's it, it's done. If I wanna do gold on this, I'm gonna go back in and do the rim with gold the next firing. So this has to be finished, fired, done, then I can put gold on it. All right, so I'm gonna set this to the side. There it is, blue plate special. And now we'll do a vase. Same luster. And this is where we have, you know, design decisions. Do we luster the entire piece to the tippy top or just here? I think I'm just gonna do here and here. Same brush and we'll go in. There. If you get luster where you don't want it, you can use rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip or some of the essence. I have found that the gold sometimes, even if you think you've wiped it off, it still sticks and it's still there. All right, so there's our mother of pearl. You saw how fast that was? So you could do a whole bunch of pots. Like you could have five, six, ten pots, whatever, and you could luster them all up and do another firing pretty quickly. You're like these are gonna go in my kiln tonight. I'm not waiting. So they'll go in for the luster firing and be ready in a couple days to share the results, probably by Friday. But I'm not putting another coat on, just one coat, that's it, let it dry. You don't need to do two coats. If it comes out of the firing and you think some of it needs more, then do one more lighter layer, but it's always better to have to do a second layer than it is to put it on too thick because it can go white and cloudy and then you run into some issues. All right, so now we're gonna do the cleaning and this is why you need the separate essences for everybody because we're gonna put this in and swirl it around. You might be able to use turpentine for this. So can lusters, gold, and decals all be fired in the same kiln mode? Absolutely, along with china paints too. Yep, you can put all that in, yeah. And that's my process. You know, when I do those plates, I fire 12 times for all my soldier pieces. I'm gonna have Kevin go down and grab one of my soldier pieces to share with everybody so you can see. All right, get gold, one of the gold ones that has lots of layers if you see one down there. So we just clean it off. The dye will dye your bristles, that's fine. And then you just set this to the side. Now, this is your mother of pearl mop brush forever and ever. It's never gonna not be for mop. You'll never put it in anything else right? It's not going anywhere else. So we'll set that to the side. Done with the mother of pearl. Here's our essence. You can see if we look at the bottom, I don't know if the camera shows, it's blue. So it's dyed it. And if you use premium gold, which is a red color, it'll dye it red. And you know, the dye, it's just dyes. The blue is just a dye. So you see where you put it. Ah, will glaze, luster glaze stick to surfaces? It really doesn't. Um, it just leaves smudgy brown color behind. Yeah, so I'm gonna take a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol on it and wipe the foot ring really well just to get any of the smudginess off the bottom to clean it up before I put it in the kiln. And, and that's really it. But if I didn't, this wouldn't fuse to my kiln shelf and, and cause a big problem. All right, so Kevin brought me up a couple of my pieces that I do. So my soldier series that I make, and here's two examples so I can show off you know, part of my process. So this one here, has been fired one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has been fired eight times. Has a bisque fire, a glaze fire, a decal firing, three china paint firings, 
a vintage commercial decal firing, another china paint firing to fill in, and then a gold firing. So this one's had all that done to it to get it to where it is today. And this one's had probably about that many firings. And this was, uh, this has gold and mother of pearl. So I would have done two luster firings. I would have done the mother of pearl first, and I would have done the gold second. So these pieces, um, you know, go in the kiln, kiln multiple times because each treatment has to be fired separately. So you can do really complicated surfaces and you can put a lot of things on your pieces. You just got to fire them separately. So that's a good thing to, um, do I need to use a cookie with the pieces to fire it? No, no, you don't. No, you can just go ahead and do it. All right, so Hannah had a question. How do I know when it's time to replace the luster? I use it all um, when it gets empty. Yeah, if it gets thick and tarry, just go ahead and add a bit of essence. And you can use the essence until it's gone. All right, let's do, let's do this little guy. And I'm going to grab my banding wheel. And I'm going to put it on a little board because after I, I put gold on the edge, I'm not going to be able to grab it, I, but I can lift the whole board off, right? So that, that works fine. And I think I'm going to re-wipe it with rubbing alcohol because I did touch it a bit. You don't need the respirator for cleaning. Um, you should keep the respirator on the whole time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why am I not? Because I am having a hard time in general breathing, and if I put the respirator on, I don't think I, I can't I can't force the air through my lungs. So right now, I'm in a different situation. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do white gold. No, let's do, let's do bright gold. I wanna do bright gold. So I got bright gold. Let me get my bright gold brush. And I'm gonna dip it in to clean it. Definitely gonna wanna zoom in on this one, Kev, if you can, because we're gonna be close up. And then this is our bottle of bright gold. Let's open it up. So I see there's some people still asking about why we have to fire them separately. If we put, let me just grab this. If I put mother of pearl on the surface, we have other things than mother of pearl included in the luster right now. Um, there's some other solvents in there. There's some suspension agents. There's other things that are gonna have to burn away. It's not pure luster. The same with the gold. You know, you have to put, the gold has lots of other things in it, and when it burns away, it can be up to 22%, 22 carats is what it can be rated as. If we put on this surface that has all those other things in it, a, another luster which has all of its things in it, it's going to become muddy because it's not necessarily the mother of pearl or the gold that's the issue. It's all the other things that are in it. So it just won't work, I promise you. Um, but test it. I mean, I, I love people learning through a uh, trial, right? So we've got our brush and we're gonna go with our bright gold. I am gonna put my mask on. Okay, now. I'm gonna grab my seat and sit so I can get a steadier base. So when you're doing edges, you wanna make sure you have something steady to rest your hands on so you don't shake. So you can find something in your studio to rest it on, like a towel that's rolled up, or you can use just a table or something. I'm gonna dip it in. And we're just gonna brush. And so you can see it's a brown color. I don't know if the camera can pick it up right there. Where the luster is, it's brown. That's what the bright gold is. The premium gold is red before firing. 
And it can be kind of hard to see on this red piece, I think. And again, if you get gold where you don't want it, rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip, clean it off. If you fire your piece and you end up with purple smudges from the gold not being thick enough in areas you don't want it, you can buy this thing called a gold eraser and you can erase it away. So you just brush it on. It's really thick and you want it to be that way. Uh, I don't know if I can show. I mean, I can dip my brush in, hold it up and get a little bead of it. It drips off, but not, not as liquidy as water would be. And again, you only really need one coat. If you go too heavy with your gold, it can bubble. And you can use gold on a surface if you want to paint patterns instead of just edging. You can do that. You can put gold on top of mother of pearl, firing in between, mind you. You can also fire gold on and then put mother of pearl on top of the gold so you can switch it up. You could also fire gold on a piece, an all gold piece, and then you could paint china paints on the gold so you have a gold background. So fancy, right? You can also put decals on a gold fired piece. But just remember, you have to fire in between. I wish we didn't have to, but you do. So it looks like there's nothing there I know, but it's there all the way around. And I only did the edge of it. I didn't, I didn't come in. I mean, I could cross that. Maybe I will just cross the top barely right here. So they make this thing for painting that you can rest your arm on, and I always forget the name of it, and I know it, but painters out there, you know what I'm talking about, it's a stick that you can use to rest your hand on. But a rolled up towel, like right here, would have been perfect. Next time. So that one's done. So if you do mother, if you put on mother of pearl, if you did a gold lip, could you do it one firing? If they don't touch, yes. So if you want to do, um, I'm going to clean this. If you put mother of pearl on a piece and gold on a piece, on the, on the same piece, on the same pot, as long as those two don't touch each other, perfectly fine. You won't get that reaction that happens. So my brush is now clean and I can set this to the side, put the top back on my essence, and then I think we will have time. Where are we at? We only got a few more minutes. Yeah. Gold dots for the freckles on the cheeks. Oh, but we got the gold circles. I have to put the dots in the little blush. I'll think about it. The good thing is I can always fire it again. All right. I'm going to put the lusters away, and that's, I think, all we're going to do tonight because we got the giveaway, and I want to answer all your questions. So if you use premium gold on a red plate, could you add food coloring to the gold to change the red so it's easier to see when applying? Um, I don't know what that would do to it. It'll thin it down so it might run too much, and it won't have the thickness it needs to have to hold in the spots you put it. So I'm thinking that could be a little bit of an issue if you did that. Um, the thing is, when you're applying it at home, you're going to be able to see where you put it because the um, glossiness of the luster. Like you're going to be able to see. There we go. Got to fix this one over here. There. So you'll be able to see it on the surface. Uh, put it up to camera two. 
Yeah. Ooh, you were so close. So I don't know if you can see the gloss. See the shine? You can see where the luster has been applied. So in person, I can see where the luster is. I got a little bead right here. Do you see it's a little thicker right there? So I'm going to take my brush. And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to pull that and thin it out a little bit. If it's too thick, it can bubble. If it's too thin, it goes purple. So we don't want either of those, but one layer, just one normal layer of gold will be fine. So the gold goes on clear and comes out gold. Well, actually the gold's brown, my dear. So let me show you the gold here. I'll paint gold on a paper towel so you'll see if you're doing white, what you'd get with gold. This is the gold, ready? See, it's brown. So if you're working on porcelain or light colored pieces, you're gonna see it really easy. It's only a little more difficult to see on darker pieces because it's a dark color. It goes on brown and fires gold. And that's for the bright gold. The premium gold goes on red and comes out gold. And the difference between the premium gold's more yellow, bright gold is more red. So that's the, the difference between the two. You can see it. All right, good, good, yay. All right, great. I'm glad. So uh, when you get done using your mask, put it back put it back in its bag. Um, you know, these filters are working all the time and it just, there's less stuff for it to collect in this little bag than if you just leave it sitting in the room. Also, your mask, you might not want dust getting into the inside of your mask and you probably don't want other critters crawling up in there because you're gonna put it on your face. And I say this every time, but from experience, spiders in your mask, when you put it on your face, they are not your friends. They don't like your face being that close to them and they will bite your face. So don't do that. Keep it in its bag. All right. So got any other questions tonight? So I can go over. Are the metallic luster fired in a gas kiln? So these here are metallic lusters that are considered overglaze enamels, overglaze lusters actually. And they go in your electric kiln it could be in a gas kiln, but you're only going to 018. You don't need a reduction atmosphere. So an electric kiln and you will get gold, like this piece has gold on it. And then this piece has the mother of pearl on it. So you get these finishes just in your electric kiln. Now there are other lines of glazes. There are glazes out, that, that, out there that are meant to go in gas kilns or reduction atmospheres that are a luster glaze. This is not a glaze. So just to be clear, Lusters that we're using are not glazes. So they're different, they're over glazes. So just keep that in mind when you're working with them. It's not a glaze, it's different. <laughs> All right, so the name of the piece, red glaze. The red glaze on this piece is Amico's Snapdragon Celadon. And this is two coats of it and it's a great red. It's a nice red. It's one of the more opaque celadons. So if you have texture, just keep in mind it does subdue the texture a little bit. So it's not quite as bright as it would have been with a lighter color. What was the type of mask? That was my, hold it up, my 3M6100 half mask respirator. <laughs> and then the cartridges I have on are the standard VOC cartridges that work for this mask. So when you buy your mask, I got mine on Amazon, um, it'll tell you what cartridges work for it. Make sure you get one. Just follow the links they'll share with you and get the one that is good for VOCs, which is volatile organic compounds, which is what all like paint, luster, when we are anything that, you know, is going to be in the air. I also am running an air cleaner, a really uh, professional grade air cleaner in my studio and I have good ventilation. You want all of that. And the lusters once fired are food safe. They are not safe right here like this. In liquid form, you don't want to ingest it. Once they're fired and on the surface, they're food safe. Yes. Um, caveat to that, Mako slash Duncan lusters are food safe and that's the ones I use. Check with your manufacturer because they might not be. Actually, I think I'm showing the essence, the other lusters over here. There it is. Yeah. 
So, alrighty. So, mall stick. A mall stick. Yes, Chris, thank you. That's what it was, the mall stick. I couldn't remember, but yeah, it's a stick you can prop up and then put your hand on. And it's used in painting or drawing to keep your hand off the surface. But a rolled up, I mean, I could have just used the roll of paper towels and that would have been a nice thing to steady my hand, right? All right. So this filter is not the same one for silica dust. No, it is not. Right. Thank you for pointing that out. So the VOC is not the same. They do make one, however, I found that does filter silica and VOCs. So if you research, you might be able to find that. I already have a older mask that I use and I already have silica cartridges on that one. So this is mine for VOCs. It just makes it easy for me. I just grab the mask. Uh, one last thing I want to put out there for you guys. Clay Share Day is coming. Two weeks from today is Clay Share Day. And that is the Clay Share birthday. So it's our fifth birthday. Hard to imagine Clay Share has been around for five full years, but we have. And we have a full day lined up for you all to celebrate our birthday. We want to give you all presents. So we have a day full of demos and tutorials from all the leading ceramic manufacturers and artists. So we have some exciting things coming for you. We also have giveaways all day long. So we'll be giving away lots of goodies. So that's gonna be very exciting. So come join us as we celebrate our birthday. It's free, you don't have to pay a penny. And it's gonna be on ClayShare.com and on the ClayShare apps. So if you just turn on ClayShare that day, ClayShare day, day, which is June 15th, in case anybody wants the date, um, you're gonna get Clay Share Day. We also are recording all of it so that if you miss Clay Share Day live or can't attend for whatever reason, you get all of it recorded later. You can come back and watch. And again, for prize entries, all you have to do is go fill out the email list on Clay Share. That's it. Sign up for our email list and premium members are always, always included in our giveaways without having to do anything. I know, Clay Share Day, five, five years, five years. I can't believe it. I blink. I, I think it was just yesterday. I started YouTube 10 years ago in 2012. So I've been doing this 10 years, but ClayShare has been five years and uh, yeah, I've loved every second of it. And I love you all and that you all come out and hang out with me and spend time with me. And those of you who are a part of our ClayShare family, a huge thank you to everybody who came out this past weekend for open studio weekend. I don't know how many people we had, I, I was so busy from the time it started on Saturday and ended on Sunday, I didn't catch a break. We had a nonstop stream of folks coming from all over. We had a member fly from Singapore to see us. So all the way from Singapore to little old Vermont in the USA. So thank you all for taking the time to come visit me and hang out and see the studio and to find about, out about the new studio that we're breaking ground on later this month and we'll be building throughout the summer and into the fall. And the next open studio event will happen at the new studio. I'm so excited. So yeah, awesome, right? We have, so it's crazy. I have a video out there that has 253 million views currently. Um, and then I have a bunch that are a little less and we have thousands and thousands of members. So it's kind of crazy that we got so many people hanging out with us on ClayShare. Okay. Any other questions before we give some stuff away? Yes, Mary Jane, you can use lavender or clove oil to take the place of essence. Absolutely. And Patty found me during the pandemic. What is my favorite color? Oh, anything with mother of pearl on it. <laughs> I like the luster, irid anything iridescent has no help. Uh, I love greens and blues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that helps. We got Jackie from Australia. Just tried the peacock glaze style and it came out superb. I love that, Jackie. Yay, the peacock glazing is so fun. So, so fun. I love that you are sharing it. Okay. I oh, love back to you, Rich and Teresa. Mwah. Kisses. All right. Let's give stuff away. So we are giving away three bottles of essence. Not used, by the way. Brand new bottles. You don't get my used bottles. I mean, Maybe I'll give away goodies to somebody, but these are used. They're not tonight's prize. So three new bottles of essence, three brushes, right? And three lusters. That's nine, 
prizes. You're going to get the white gold, the bright gold, and the mother of pearl. And this prize is sponsored by Clayscapes Pottery, and they want me to let you all know that the Mako 20% discount is good on lusters, so if you need to get lusters, you can order them from Clayscapes Pottery. But that ends at midnight tonight, unless I can say, Drew, extend it till tomorrow, so that um, folks who watch the replay, I'll talk to Drew and see if we can get that done. But I can't guarantee. So midnight tonight is your deadline. So that's in, uh, you guys got six hours to decide if you need luster. It's good on Mako brushes too and any Mako glaze or products that they sell at Clayscapes as well. 20% off. That's a bargain. All right. Are y'all ready to win? We have tonight's winner ready. Drum roll. We got a drum roll? We got a drum roll. Yeah, I'm ready. Drum roll. <laughs> the winner is Marie DeMarco. Congratulations, Marie. We will send you an email and Clayscapes and you guys will get together and we'll send your prize out to you. You're going to be lustering up a storm. I can't wait to see what you do. Just like I can't wait to see what everybody does. Share what you make with Made with Clayshare so that I can check it out on social media. And those of you who are our members, remember, it's June 1st. That means the June Clay Share Challenge is up. So I have a new class coming out later this week. It doesn't meet this month's challenge. It meets last month's challenge when we were doing face pots. A little behind because of Open Studio Weekend. You know, it's been crazy. But we're going to start on making things to meet that June challenge together. And I think you're going to be in love with it because we have so many fun things going on. All right, mark your calendars for Clay Share Day, June 15th, and I'll see all of my premium members on Friday at 6.15 p.m. for prime time where we'll China paint, and everybody else, I'll see you back next Wednesday. What? Whoa. Oh, Marie is here. Oh my gosh. Hi, Marie. Congrats. Yeah, honey, you're going to get all these goodies. Like, I can't even hold them all in my hands, but you're going to get them all. And I can't wait to see what you do with them. It's so, so exciting. So I'll be back next week because it's the last live broadcast before Clay Share Day. Clay Share Day happens on a Wednesday. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be good. We have some amazing things lined up. I'll be putting a full schedule out soon. I'm waiting for, I'm still waiting for a few folks to give me descriptions. But we'll be working on that this week and getting the schedule out towards the end of this week. All right, everyone. Take care. Be well. Make great pots.